annals of the early West record many stories of famous and notorious characters of that period. In the San Joaquin Valley of California in the early 1890s, Christopher Evans and John Sontag blamed their troubles on the railroad and waged a relentless and bloody war of vengeance. Miss Evans, is your uncle at home? Inside. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Evans? Sontag? You didn't have to come out to check on me, Sheriff. I told the railroad commissioner I'd move. I'm glad you don't intend to make any trouble, sir. If I didn't have a family, I'd make plenty of trouble. One man against a railroad? Foolish even to think of it. I wouldn't be alone. John here holds the same sentiments as me. I suppose you know what the railroad did for him when he got his ribs smashed in the Gilroy Roundhouse. He had hospital treatment. Sure. They booted me out before I was healed. They wouldn't even give me my job back. If Chris hadn't put me on as a hired hand, I'd have starved. Now, we're not the only ones around here that are fed up. Others like me have built barns and houses, worked the land, hoping to buy it like the railroad promised. And I was an acre. It ain't fair. It's armed eviction, and that's just as bad as armed robbery. No need to talk so tough to me, boys. Uh, I didn't make the rules. Why don't you be sensible like the other farmers and take it to court? <laughs> what chance would we have in court against the railroad? If enough of you got together, the railroad commission would have to listen. Yeah, by the time we got a decision, our kids would have kids of their own. Ah. Uh, there's no use of trying to argue with a couple of hotheads like you. I'm telling you, Chris, I can't take this pushing around much longer. Yeah, save your talking bullets for the railroad job. When we make a noise, we're going to make a big one. You just stay on here with me. Well, why stay with you? Well, like you said, you've got a family. I want action. Yeah, there was something that I wouldn't tell the sheriff. But I'll tell you, boy, when a family is threatened with extinction, man's first duty is to take up arms against a common foe. A monstrous one-eyed foe of fire and steel. we were put on the case, one central California had become a feeble gesture. I'm Matt Clark. The young lady with me is Miss Jones. We're detectives for the Southwest Railroad. We had left San Francisco in July 1892 on the southbound train for Visalia, center of the railroad robberies and wreckings. When the train made a five-minute stop at Modesto, we stepped off to stretch. Let's get back to the train. Hey, wait a minute. Here, look at that. Top Eastern detectives join hunt for train robbers. Reliable sources reveal the detectives left San Francisco by train this morning to give our local law enforcers a lesson in the fine art of catching criminals. How do you like that for a dig? Not the dig, it's a brass band, I mind. Well, I can see we're not going to be very popular with the law in Visalia. You'd rather be right than popular, wouldn't you? From what I hear, I'm not so sure we're right. Look, Jonesy, no matter how right a man is, if he grabs a gun to start an argument, he's dead wrong from the start. Remember that, will you? Yes, Father. Railroading's a tough business. It has to be to push those tracks into rough country. Now and then a rail drops on somebody's toes and the railroad becomes a big bully. But what happens? A couple of hotheads start shooting at the big bully and they become heroes. What? Well, we better go. Hey, wait a minute. 
Matt, we're going to miss the train. Well, if you want that brass band to meet you by Sailor, go right ahead. Now, don't tell me you're scared of it. Yep. I'm just a big country boy, and a mighty shy one at that. But what about the baggage? It'll wait for us in Sailor. Besides, who'd want to steal anything from a railroad detective? <laughs> Come on. Let's check that stage heading south. Where's your aunt? In the house, reading the Bible, pretending she don't know what's going on. Well, you ought to be more like her, Sue. I'd rather be like you, Uncle Chris. Why don't you trust me anymore? Why don't you tell me where you've been? Well, what you don't know, you can't lie about. And I don't aim to raise a family of liars. I'm not a baby anymore. I'm grown up. <laughs> well, Well, come here, Susie. Let's just see how grown up you are. Well, I have to tell you, it's not Susie, it's Sue. Oh, John, John, put me down, put me down this minute. Come on, John, come on. Let's get back to town. Oh, we got plenty of time, Chris. Sue and me are engaged. Ain't we? Susie? Oh, oh. Bye. You just wait, John Sontag. I'll get him with you for that. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Much obliged, driver. Come on, Tony. No brass band. Feel better? Yeah, I do. If I turn politician, I'm gonna do my kind of work sort of private-like. Well, the train's already in. It's about an hour before supper time. You wanna look up the sheriff first? No, well, naturally. Business before supper. I don't know where his office is. Looks like it might be down the street. Let's go. Things been popping. They blew the trestle south of Fresno. Train got across just in time. Holy cats. I tell you, Nate, we got to do something. Five robberies and two explosions, and we don't even have a suspect. We got the poorest record in the country. Now, if you're through spouting, uh, take a look at this. Yeah, it says Peru, don't it? 15,000 in Peruvian coins stolen in the Collins train robbery last month. Remember? How could I forget? We've been looking out for one of these coins ever since. Where did you find it? Evans and Sontag livery stable. Jefferson found it while he was cleaning up. Figured it might be one of them? Well, both him and Sontag have motives. Their hatred for the railroad. They've been gone all day today. Long enough to have been to Fresno. Doggone. Imagine two respectable businessmen like them. Now hold on, Ed. We've got to be sure. Now we've got to talk to them first. Uh, nice and polite. Now maybe they have an alibi and uh, maybe not. Hmm. Sheriff Owens? Yeah? I'm Matt Clark. This is Margaret Jones. 
Miss Jones and I represent the Southwest Railroad. Oh, detectives. That's right. I got a telegram about you. Oh. So, you're the two bright folks who came all the way from Kansas City to show us yokels how to catch train robbers. We came all the way from Kansas City because that's what the boss told us to do. Personally, I'd just as soon go fishing. Not me, Sheriff. I just as soon do my job whether you like it or not. I don't like it. Look, we're all trying to do the same thing. Why don't we cooperate? What's the use of fighting about this? I'm not going to fight. I just don't intend to cooperate. Why not? We've done all the spade work, dug through the records, sifted evidence and checked alibis. And now when we come up with some real evidence, enough to arrest someone, you two eastern bird dogs come into town just in time to get your pictures on the front page along with those prisoners. Are you quite finished, Sheriff? No, I'm not finished. Not until I've made it clear that we're handling this ourselves. And we don't want any strangers hogging our credit. Now go fly your kite somewhere else. Is that clear? Yeah, yeah, that's pretty clear. You get the general idea, Jonesy? Yes, I do. And I think it's awfully sweet of you, Sheriff Owens, to relieve us of this nasty job. Well, Matt, we might as well retire gracefully and try to find two friendly people. Two friendly people? To play cards with, of course. How else are we going to pass the time of day? Your arm, Mr. Clark. Good day, Sheriff. Good hunting, boys. Good day. Of all the insulting people, I... Hold your horses, hold your horses. He was right, you know. We are butting in. Matt Clark, you mean to tell me you're going to kowtow to that yokel? You're just going to sit around and do nothing? Nope. While you're looking for those two friendly people, I'm going fishing. Oh, no, you're not. I'm starving, and I want that supper you promised me. <laughs> Evans and Sontag just drove in. We're going to talk to them now? Any talking that has to be done with them has to be done just right. I'll do it myself. You stay put. Straighter answers than that, Chris. Why don't you and John come down to the office with me and we'll talk it over. thing, Sheriff. The busted rib. Yeah. That ought to hold you till the doctor gets here. And for information, Sheriff, we're gonna stick around whether you like it or not. As a matter of fact, we never had any intention of leaving. I'm sorry about what I said. The way I bungled this, I guess I could have stood some expert advice. But there's one thing you can be sure of. There's no longer any mystery about those train robbers. Who are they, Sheriff? Sontag and Evans. Posses were formed all along the San Joaquin Valley and sent into the foothill mining country along the high Sierras. But Sontag and Evans had friends who hated the railroad more than lawlessness and sheltered and fed them. When it looked like the search might stretch into months, Jones and I had a conference with the sheriff to find a quicker and surer way. What about this man, Sontag? How does he fit in with Evans? Sontag came out here a couple of years ago from Minnesota. Got a job with the railroad, and when he had an accident, he claimed it didn't take care of him. Chris Evans gave him a job as a handyman, and he's been with him ever since. Uh, even went in the livery business with him. How old is Sontag? About 25, I'd say. Good looking fella. I hear Chris Evans' niece is kind of sweet on him. 
Things get pretty tough up in the Sierras. You think the winter will drive them out? Oh, I doubt it. I've been deer hunting with Evans. He's a crack shot and a good woodsman. When he was a young fellow, he was a scout with Custer. You know, Sheriff, what you said about Sontag and Mr. Evans' niece interests me. Oh, remember. As far as I know, that's only gossip. Have you ever thought of gossip as intuitive truth? Intuitive? Well, wow. that certainly entitles you to floor, madam. You go right ahead. Thank you, sir. Chris Evans' family haven't moved out, have they? No, they're not the type to run away just because the old man's in trouble. Well, then, working on the highly probable theory that two attractive young people are in love, maybe we could use this to our own advantage. How do you mean, ma'am? Yeah. I'm so happy to meet you, my dear. I'm Mrs. Sontag. Who'd you say you were? Mrs. John Sontag. I understand my husband's been living here. Your husband? John? Go on, lady. What do you think you're giving me? It would be so like John not to have told you about me. What do you want? What'd you come out here for? Simply this. I've been reading about John in the papers, about him holding up all those trains. He must be very wealthy by now, and as his wife, I'd like to share in it. Of course, now that I see how pretty you are, John will probably try to deny everything. Shut up. Go find your husband for yourself. Don't go asking any favors of me. Get out of here, right now. Go on, get. Don't you ever come back to your hair? Looks like it's working, Sheriff. I'll trailer leave you plenty of signs. Get the posse and follow me. Tell the Evans girl to a foothill mine where the two train robbers were holed up with friends. Then double back to tell the Sheriff. Sheriff joined me with some of his posse. We agreed on a plan of attack. He to come up the main trail with the bulk of his men. I to hit from the ridge behind the mine with two or three men. Give yourself up, Evans. You're surrounded. You haven't got a chance. Do you understand? I hear you, Sheriff. You can save your breath. If you want us, come in and get us. Let's go! Stopped in that time, huh, John? Get her out of here, Chris. I'm done. Like he's hurt pretty bad. The sheriff will take care of him. Come on. Evans was bleeding in his trail through the cave and up the canyon was easy to follow.
like the trail leads to that shack. Well, that's the way to Perkins' place. Miss Evans, he's wounded, wore out, hasn't got a chance. Why do you want to prolong the misery? You want to go back there and find him lying dead? No, no! Well, then tell him to give himself up. Tell him he hasn't got a chance. You don't know him. I'd rather die than give up. All right, Sheriff, let's take him. Stay with her, Sam. Mr. Pursue, coming for me now. Six men covering you. Throw down your gun. Stay alive, Uncle Chris, please, for me. I give up on one condition. Name it. I don't want no railroad man getting my reward. Understand? The old lady inside. The widow Perkins, she's the one that deserves it. The railroad drove her off her land, too. She gets some money or I keep on shooting. You hear? Well, how do you like that for sheer brass nerve? You go for it? Well, it's for a worthy cause, but that's up to you. All right, Evans. You've got a deal. understand, isn't it, Matt? Yeah. Except for that blind, stubborn hatred, Evans is probably one of the finest family men you'd ever want to meet. Christopher Evans tried by the grand jury of Fresno County, California, on the 21st of February, 1894, was found guilty of murder in the first degree, sentenced to Folsom Prison for the period of his natural life. John Sontag died of his wounds in the Fresno jail. <laughs> 